this video, I'm going to talk about what is karma. You harm yourself as dust thrown against the wind comes back to the thrower. That is one of my favorite quotes from the Buddha. And this quote gives a really good hint and a clue as to what karma actually is. In the West, the way we use karma and the way we think about it is kind of like this. We think of it as uh, a universal law of justice. So that if somebody goes, for example, and robs a bank, which we consider an evil act, so they go rob a bank, and then let's say the police don't catch him and he gets away with it, then what we tend to think is that, well, karma's going to get him in the end. And by that, what we mean is that at some point later in his life, eventually the laws of justice will kind of even themselves out, just naturally. Because something bad will happen to that person. Somehow he deserves it now that he's going to get some other punishment for it. So maybe five years later, somebody will steal a car from him. Or maybe five years later, something bad will happen to some other aspect of his life, and they'll say, ha-ha, karma got you because you did something evil in your past. But this is really not how karma works. And this is kind of like a cartoon character version of how karma works. So I want to give you the more accurate, nuanced way in which karma works. And this is going to apply directly to your life. So it's not just about bank robbers and murderers. This is going to apply to everything that's happening to you right now. And it's going to explain a lot of why you suffer in your life and you're not getting the results that you want in your life. So this is worth understanding. Basically, as the Buddha was saying, every action that you take in life has a certain consequence to it. And bad actions have natural bad consequences. And these bad consequences, they don't have to come from the outside. The worst of them come from the inside. Action. Karma equals action. If you take away only one thing from this video, let it be this. Karma equals action. Now when you think about this, you might wonder, well, action, what does this have to do with justice and equality that we take karma to mean? So it's basically the law of cause and effect. Every effect has a cause. The way karma gets you is something like this. So let's say that this bank robber, he robs a bank and he gets away with it, and let's say he goes to some tropical island, and now he's chilling on the island, he's just living there. Now you might say, well, he got away with it. Maybe karma will get him five years later by something going wrong with him. But no, karma already got him. Because in his mind, this is a selfish person. The act originated from selfishness. It's not like the person just did something evil and that was an isolated example. No, what's happening here is that actually the selfish nature is causing this person to do evil acts. Now, why is his, na his uh, uh, nature selfish? Well, because he's unconscious and he doesn't really understand what he's doing with his actions in life. So as you get more conscious, you realize that you unwittingly commit evil. And evil is promotion <laughs> and defending of yourself. So in this case, because this person was imagining how great his life could become if he robbed a bank and had millions of dollars, so he, really, he, um, he did this evil act to promote himself, right? To secure himself at the cost of others. That's an evil action. That's, but actually, that's not the case at all. See, the kind of person that went out and robbed a bank, uh, that, that's not like an isolated example. This person is coming up with these actions because he's screwed up on the inside, because he's unconscious on the inside. And so you have a chain of this. And this is what we mean by karma, is this perpetuated chain of selfishness. And the punishment is not jail, or someone yelling at you, or a fine that you get. The punishment is suffering. The emotional suffering and distress that this person experiences in life. Because even if he got away from, from this bank, in the back of his mind, this person, he's always going to be afraid now. He's always going to be looking over his shoulder. Are they going to catch me tomorrow? Maybe they won't. But, see, he's going to suffer for that. 
He's also probably going to feel some sort of remorse or guilt. Feel any remorse. He's also probably going to feel out of integrity with himself. No. Because he's not following his own principles. He knows that robbing a bank is not right. But he did it anyways because he knew that it would make him feel good. But see, he didn't calculate the suffering that would come after the fact. And of course, you might say, well, we don't really suppress that stuff. And what's he going to feel guilty about it? And that's true, you can suppress that stuff. But still, it seeps out, right? You can't suppress it forever, and you can't suppress it in all the, uh, in all the ways that it's going to come back and get you. And the way in which it gets you is the fact that, well, just by the fact that he did something selfish here, something so obviously selfish, this is going to create a habit of selfish behavior. So now even though, let's say he says, I'm never going to rob a bank again, and he never does, okay, that's fine, but the selfishness is still going to be within him. And the point, the problem here is that he's not recognizing that he's doing selfish stuff. He's not admitting it to himself. And so this is where a lot of the harm comes from. So now he's got all this money, and he might go do something else selfish. He might be selfish in his relationships with his girlfriend. And that relationship might go sour because of that. And so he might have a string of bad relationships throughout his whole life, because he's being selfish there, he's not recognizing it. And then maybe he goes and he does something else selfish. Maybe he goes uh, partying with his friends and then there they have a fight because uh, they're not able to agree on something. And so he has a fight with his friends. And his whole life is very turbulent and there's a lot of suffering because he's not able to get along with his friends or his girlfriend or his potential wife or other aspects of his life. Um, he feels now that he needs pleasure from this money that he's got, what if the money runs out? How's he gonna feel then? So the selfishness just uh, keeps perpetuating itself. In the end, if you wanna stop this cycle, what you have to do is you have to apply conscious awareness to see that what you're doing is selfish. The real punishment for all this is basically hell. In the West, we have a Christian notion of hell, which is hell somewhere out there in another life. But actually, that notion is not what hell literally means. That notion of hell, where did it come from? It came from the actual hell, which is here for you right now. You have the hell. You're living in hell right now. Hell on earth. That's what your life is. It's a life where you're unable to actually have true happiness and peace of mind. You don't have true peace of mind because you're always stressed and anxious all the time. You're always secretly angry at someone bitter at someone trying to manipulate some circumstance, wherever it is in your life, you're always trying to do that, and your whole life is that. So this concept is very, very deep, and it's very, very subtle, because you Shut don't like doing this stuff, you don't like admitting this stuff. Going differently in my mind. Because the only way that it actually is effective is when yeah, it's not admitted. So it takes a lot of mindfulness for it. Punishment is hell. And make no, no mistake about it, right now, you're living in a hell. And what's bad about it is that you don't even recognize, many of you don't even recognize that this hell is here for you right now, that you're living in it. You're always afraid that hell is going to be out there somewhere for you. No, hell for you is right now. You're not able to be happy. And the other punishment that you get is kind of the opposite side of that coin, is that because you're in hell all the time, you're not able to experience paradise. Paradise, heaven. What is paradise and heaven? Again, that's not something up in the clouds somewhere after you die. It can be here for you right now. Heaven is the state of being spiritual, the state of having no thoughts, and the state of selflessness. When you get rid of the sense of self that you have, when you unravel that whole thing, which is basically what all enlightenment work is leading towards, then what you discover is that you can actually have true happiness right here, right now, regardless of external circumstances, and you can also have paradise for yourself right here. Paradise. Real peace of mind because you're not caught up in this karmic cycle. And so that's what the Buddha is really talking about. And that's what the Eastern yogis talk about with karma. Is that you perpetuate your own suffering and your own hell here on Earth. 99.999% of people do this. And if you want to turn this around, then you have to start to just become aware, simply aware of what's really going on here, how this karma is working. Because it can always sort of work in your favor. If you start to dissolve the self, if you start to behave from a selfless place, then you get this positive karma building up, and then you can experience paradise. It's really that simple, uh, but you have to see how nuanced this is. You have to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. We could talk about this for hours.
hours and hours and hours of all the subtle ways in which you manipulate yourself to perpetuate your nega negative karma cycle. But that's it for now, for here.